I am pretty lucky, you know, with where I work. I know you guys think Devon was fantastic, but it was 200 miles from my missus. So now, work is over there, just on the top of my hair now, and home is equidistant that way. These front wings now, apart from these two top bolts here, they've got all the secure fittings, got the little kind of plate that goes in there which secures it against the inner wing. Looking good, oh yes. And this one, uh, I still need to adjust the deck, but I'm happy now with the way the door lines up to it. Um, fitted the side glass on this side and also the rubber. That's all in place now. Don't forget when you put these uh, Stainless trims on. Don't forget to put the sliders on. <laughs> I didn't, but it's quite easy for people to do that. This rubber on this side is much better than the one on the other side. It's still not perfect, but I don't think these things ever were. I think they were always a bit kind of, you know. Anyway, um, this thing I think is because it's got a big dent there. There, if you look down from the top, you can see it pushes in. I did my best with it. Um, but it's difficult to kind of, you know, get this Burma bright looking good without just utterly destroying it. But anyway, it all lines up. Happy enough. I need to get this bonnet done next. <laughs> <clears throat> right. Exhaust update. Right. Okay. So what I've basically done is observe the, well, if you observe the end of the downpipe there, if I jack the gearbox up and off, its mountings and you can see the whole thing is going up I mean I've only jacked it maybe two centimeters um, and it's getting closer and closer so the driver's side pipe now okay I've dropped the cross member down a little bit but the driver's side pipe is well clear and the passenger side pipe is nearly clear so it's obvious to me now that the mountings that go on the chassis are completely fucking wrong on this thing I don't know what I'm gonna do uh, yet um, I've consulted with uh, a couple of people uh, to see if I can get hold of some used old stock mounts. I need to go through the parts catalogue again. The other thing that I noticed is that's probably what's not helping. Let's let that down again. There we are. What's probably not helping the um, passenger side is that this side of the engine is very, very slightly lower than that side of the engine. A couple of centimetres in it. All right, so I've loosened the mounts off here. I'm gonna to have to get the car. I was rather hoping that it was gonna level itself up when I lifted the gearbox, but there's just too much weight on it. It needs to, basically, I need to drive it. I need to put some torque through it in order to move it on the mount. So what I'm gonna to have to do is get the engine crane out um, and lift the engine up and then drop it back down again so it's level on the mounts. Because I don't know if you know, but these bits on the chassis here, they've got slots in them. Um, and the idea is kind of if I lift this side, that side will drop slightly. Um, and I'll get that sorted out. Busy sorting all the belts out, so I've got an idea about what belts are needed where. Made a little tensioner, chappy, there for the alternator. That works beautifully. Um, and then I've been working on the ignition wiring and so forth. So I've got the ignition coil, just a standard 12 volt coil wired in. And then I thought, right, I'm going to get onto the breathers next. Now, one of the things you'll find with breather pipes is all of the original stuff is unobtainium. Can't get it anymore. It's completely unavailable. Now, what's going on with this thing? Why is that not working? Oh, oh, that's broken then. <laughs> I know where that's gone. It's on the floor somewhere. It's got my important mount on it. Oh, that's a cock up. Right, um, <clears throat> have I got the little tripod here? Little tripod, little tripod, we're right there. I've got the little tripod here. Let's screw you on. Oh, I see. Can't ever say this show's scripted. No, 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 no. Right, let's see if we can get this thing to actually do something and not fall over. That'll work. Right, where are we? quarter to wait I'm packing up in two seconds so pipe that I'm kind of using uh, for the breather you notice when you bend it it kind of collapses on the inside here 
And when that happens, um, the engine will breathe heavily and blow all of the exhaust gases, combustion gases, back down the valve guides and straight out the exhaust, causing a very, very smoky exhaust system. What I do, um, I get compression springs. Now, this one is, sorry, expansion springs. This one is a slinky kind of number, and this one's a bit firmer. All I really do is just wedge it up inside the pipe. Observe, and now when I bend it, it doesn't collapse. How easy is that? Um, obviously, you need to make sure that the external diameter on this matches the ex sorry internal diameter on that. Its point is going for a spring that's far too small. Um, there's probably other ways you could do it. I'm mean, expecting I could probably get some tube, some metal tube in there. But these things, they're, they're, they're not that expensive. Stainless as well. So that will fix that. And it means that all of these kind of unobtainium hoses that operate as the breathers. Coffee. You can make them up yourself. So I've got the little flame trap on there. Uh, I'll chop the little nodule off the end of it. Really, what I need to do is put enough in there such that when it's over here, can you see? You can. When it goes onto the engine, oops, because the problem is that when that goes onto the engine and goes under there, you can see that that is actually under quite a lot of strain on that corner. So I don't need to put the spring down the whole length of it, just like the last two inches. So I shall chop a bit of spring off. Come back to me. Sorry, folks, I'm just like, I'm regurgitating that coffee for some reason, which is most unpleasant. And I, I just get this stuff off eBay. This stuff came from Nick and Wendy Ashton, springsandthings.me.uk, and their um, eBay site is First Compression. I only do this thing, you know, because people moan that I don't tell them where I get my shit from. There you go. This is the first one that I found when I searched it. And so it's the one... Oh, you fucker! Oh, it's quite tough, this stuff. It's off. I'll poke that into this end, like that. I'm not worried about that hook on the end. I mean, this. if you look at the breather systems that are on the later cars, they're full of bloody mesh and gauze and shit anyway. It will need to go in a tiny bit further. And then back with me. <coughs> to yar. Hey, there goes the camera. Oh, one of the legs has collapsed. It's annoying, I broke my bloody tripod. Especially for you lot, I like to watch every fucking thing I do, keeping an eye on me, making sure I'm not up to it, no good. Now you see, when I push that under there, there's no way is that crimped. Um, I need to get the clip on the bottom of here in order to hold that. But there's no way is that going to crimp now, which is good, exactly what I was looking for. And then this chap, hey, boing, 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 boing. that was almost um, phallic, wasn't it? <laughs> that needs to go round, and that, that one's not going to crimp, you see, so I don't need to worry too much about that one. Um, I'll need to shorten it. And I need to do the one on the other side, exactly the same. And then once the, um, the arms are in place, that'll do that. Breathers will be working. Oh, yeah. Because in this kind of like, you know, we've got to be a bit responsible about where we send all our uh, <coughs> combustion gases and exhaust gases and stuff. We don't really want it all. Kind of just piling out into the atmosphere, do we? No, Richard. Right, what else have I done today? Well, I cleaned up the floor, uh, which you can't see because the light's shining in your face. Um, so I was just going to lob some paint on the transmission tunnel cover. I've got all of the fixings now to put the seat boxes in. And I painted the two window frames. So they're sat in black. So the two window frames, the two sections for the top here. I'm going to put those on tomorrow because I want all the glass in this thing sooner rather than later. I've got the quarter light for the passenger side. I haven't got a quarter light frame for the driver's side yet. Um, and I still need to paint the tailgate. And there's the bottom tailgate. Hmm. Done nothing with that all day long. I was rather hoping to, but just haven't got round to it really. That's what happens. <sighs> now I was looking at this belt and I was wondering if this belt is actually too skinny. I might go for a slightly fatter profile belt 
Um, the problem when they drop down inside the pulleys too much is it wears the shoulder off the belt and then just drops down further and you just end up with a perpetually squeaking belt. Because um, basically what the water pump, in fact I can turn the water pump, yeah, that's, that's how loose that is. Um, so the water pump and the crank pulley, I need to get a slightly wider belt than that one. Uh, same width as this one I'm guessing. This one's not tight yet because I've got to take these hydraulic pipes off. Yes. I think it's a step forwards anyway. And then I was looking at the other breather, which I've got this pipe for, which is what was attached on. It goes on to the back of the engine down here. Um, and somewhat foolishly, I hadn't actually done it before I put it all in. So I'm going to have to do something there. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get down to it. I should be able to then. I mean, in theory, I should be able to push it in. Luckily, I've got spare blocks that I can piss around with and I need to bung one of these holes up and have that one going um, via a fuel filter and straight back into the base of the air filter. Let me tidy that up as well. It's not very tidy, is it, Richard? But you get the drift. You get the drift of what I was trying to do here. In fact, you might need to put a spring just in that bit there just to hold that. It might work. We'll see. <clears throat> right, onwards. No, fuck it, home. Right, as promised, gearbox. Uh, my new tripod hasn't arrived yet, so you have to put up with me handheld here. Sorry for the wobbly coverage. Now, oh, hello. this is the um, parts diagram for Range Rover with the Borg Warner transfer box up to HA. Okay, memorize that picture. Then we've got the picture from JA. Okay, the only thing that's different is that mount there. And then the last one we've got is the very, very, very first one, which is basically the four-speed LT95 and the three-speed automatic. Now, one thing that you will find astonishingly similar is that all of these components look very, 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 very similar. I've got that mount, which seems to be the correct one. I've got that mount, which seems to be the correct one. And all these part numbers on the passenger side seem to line up. Um, on the driver's side, I haven't got that plate because it doesn't fit onto the fork corner. I've got that plate. Okay. And then the mounting, this is on the driver's side, which goes to the chassis. I think I need this one here. You can see how much higher that is, kind of. What I've actually got is this one. Now, this one came from the VM engined car, but kind of, I thought, well, it looks similar to that one, which is the one I thought it should be. Um, but I think this is part of the problem. It's also a bastard to get off because none of the bolt holes are accessible from outside. It's a, an absolute, you know, it's a swine getting that bolt out there. It's a nightmare. So I've taken that off the car. Now, that's not, that's not the only problem I've got here. So the other thing I've done is I've leveled up the engine. So I lifted the engine just very, very gently, um, undid this mount loosened that mount, lifted the engine, because like I said, they've got big slots on them, and you can see the engine down there, if you can see the shadow on the mounting plate just there, uh, but the engine's gone up about a centimetre on this side, and the same on that side, and it's more level. Okay, so I've checked the height from the chassis rail to the edge of the rocket cover, and it's bang on both sides. And then the other thing that I need to do, <coughs> get me slippy skateboard thing which I haven't managed to tread on just yet oh my goodness bastard the other thing I've not done yet going down is on this mounting here which is obviously the passenger side mounting you can see you've got the kind of zigzag shape mounting there if you look up inside the bracket where it mounts onto the gearbox. You can see there's quite a long slot there. What I need to really do is to, is to fix the gearbox so it's higher up in that slot. And I think that's the trick. I don't know if later versions had a single hole or what, I don't know. And I suspect it would be mounted further up in that slot had I had the correct mounting on the other side, which you can see is hanging free at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna uh, jack it up. Um, and undo 
this bolt here. So undo this this whole mounting. I'm not going to video it because it's like you know I'll be concentrating on the camera and not on the five and a half tons of gearbox and engine that will be um, hovering over me. I need to lower the gearbox down, undo the bolt on the back of the mounting, push the mounting up, yeah, do the bolt back up on the mounting, and then jack it back up into position, and then it should have the gearbox higher in the transmission tunnel. Now the other challenge, there was two challenges, that was the one challenge, that was fixable. The other challenge that is less fixable, every single one of these LT77 Borg Warner um, adaptations goes into a car where the chassis mountings are about a centimetre higher. Now I can demonstrate, because I've actually got two different, um, these are the mounting plates that go underneath the, uh, the floor and basically support the leading edge of the seat box. So that's the difference in the height that I've got here. So not only have I got a challenge with the gearbox being slightly higher in the box, but I've also then got a challenge with the body being that much dip lower. So what, what's that getting off a centimetre? A centimetre lower or closer to the chassis than it would be. So yet another centimetre is lost here. Um, however, at least now I can get the exhaust on, which is good news, isn't it? I wish I'd done this weeks ago, but I'm bus busy doing other stuff, you see. <clears throat> we'll see. We will see. Um, right. The engine, at least now, is on a level. It was only, like, you know, very, very, very gently cantered over towards the passenger side, but I think every 5 mil is going to count on this. Um, I will go and have a look at my car. Um, although mine's automatic, it's got the same mounting on the passenger side to see how high up the bolt is because on this installation it's right at the very very bottom of the slot the slot here right at the very very bottom of the mounting so think, to my mind the mounting needs to be further up it's not going to go right to the top because the thread on the mounting will interfere then with the chassis but it'll go up a certain amount oh the other thing yesterday i managed to stab myself right on the scar on the bad finger i didn't feel i'd done it you can see how swollen that is now because there's no nerves in there silly ass Anyway, I've given it a good clean <laughs> and then got it dirty again. I meant to put a plaster on before I was doing the gearbox mountings. But I need to, what, I, what effectively I need, this mounting plate here is actually listed for, wait for it, by the right bloody page. I stapled it all together so I didn't lose it. 3.5 manual transmission, 3.9 automatic transmission. And I've got the 3.5 manual transmission in this car effectively so i've got 3.5 engine and the lt77 with the borg warner and that's coming up as ntc4985 ntc4985 i'm fairly sure that that is the bracket there that fucker is the one that i need and not this one um and i got a feeling looking at it that this plate here is about that much higher which would make sense with me should be and then that one is just going to end up in the box of vm brackets because that just seems to be unique to the vm i can't even find that in any of the catalogs anywhere there's no reference whatsoever because the vm was going into these cars up to ha61293 and that came off a range rover with a vm engine in it i don't know you tell me <laughs> um I've got another one of these uh, VM LT77 gearboxes as well, waiting for me, but I need to collect up um, the, 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 the mounting. Now, good news is that that is from an automatic 3.9, so there's a number of those being broken around and about, so I probably just need to get a hold of that bracket from the 3.9, and I will be away! Woohoo! Another weird day. Right, okay, today I've been working on bonnet and tailgate. Um, it's about 1 million degrees out here. <clears throat> it's actually hot enough to boil a monkey's bum, your majesty. The problem I've got is that it's too hot in all reality to paint, but it's okay to put a primer on. So I'm going to let this primer go off properly. 
um, and then I'll block this back tomorrow. And I can put a top coat on it. You didn't see any of that. Put a top coat on it tomorrow. Small skimmer filler, small skimmer filler. There's one down here somewhere there. Small skimmer filler. Bonnet, I've done the underside with a primer. So it's all been cleaned, primed. Again, block it back. And I've just started on the top side. Now the bonnet is actually, this is the bonnet that came from the 1972 car that I sold, um, Alan. Um, I'm not quite sure why I didn't use this one then, but the reason, well, sorry, the fact that I didn't is actually really good for Bob, because Bob gets a fantastic bonnet. Um, there were some holes here that someone had drilled, so again, tiny bit of filler over the top of the welded in plugs that I popped in there on each side. Well, once I've taken all the paint back and put a coat of primer on, I know exactly where they are. Um, on this, I put the side window slides in, so they now slide open and closed. Beautiful. I'm going to have to paint this top wing again, this whole top edge up to here. Needs painting. <clears throat> I knocked it there. I've gone through there and knocked it there. Paint it again. The rest of it is fine. Front wing's fine. I'm going to put the repeaters on. Um, I put all the belts on. So I know exactly which belts I need now. These belts, they are new old stock belts. So I'm inclined to leave them on there. But at least I know what belts we need. Um, and as I've shown you already, the alternator is nicely tensioned up. That wire there is for the oil pressure sensor. Door frames went in. They're not in proper. I just wanted to make sure that they went in and the door shut. Oh, didn't that close nicely? Yes. <laughs> I should get t-shirts printed up. Might sound a bit, um, I don't know, feminine. I don't know. Um, this door frame here does want to come up a tiny bit. Um, but there's so much movement and stuff around on these things that really all I did was just lobbed it in the central position and made sure it fitted. And you can see here, I've tidied up that edge. And I've tidied up that edge. That's all ready for a top coat. It's just too hot to top coat. And this door similarly um, opens and closes. Beautiful, that there, hey? That's what you get. <laughs> Dirty hands. Um, oh, the other thing I did was I ran the loom, which is up and over here through to the back end of the car. So that's a fog light. I know the fog light's not gonna be on the roof, folks. It's just gonna plug into a connector over here and then go down this wing and onto the back bumper somewhere. Put the speaker wires through because we're having a, a late headlining in this with the twin lights, but also with the twin speakers up here. So it's, it seemed a shame to butcher an early headlining for that. So. I'm going to use later headlining for that. I've also put all the wiring through for, you can see all the wiring coming down the A post over there. Put the wiring in for the uh, rear B day for the wash bike. I've got one wire here. That's for the rear wash. That's for the front wash. Two pumps. Oh, today has just been one of those days. <laughs> it has. Um, and not because of Bob or anything like that. It's just because it has been 30 degrees all day long. And not... Oh, there's a big smudge on that then. And not, you know, a normal 30 degrees. I mean, the Americans would be saying 30 degrees. Pah! Uh, no, it's a very, very, very humid 30 degrees. Think in Orlando, 30 degrees. Um, it just feels like it wants to thunder. <sighs> Beautiful now, though. I mean, it's down to about 27 now. <laughs> And we are at seven. Um, so what on earth have I been up to? Well, no lights, of course. I put the sink boxes in. Um, so really, it's just been a case of going around. Oh, look, I caught that. Fucking idiot. Um, I've been around. Uh, I bolted the seat boxes in, put the, um, the, the, the bolts in. I am missing the chassis section that goes down here. I think I've already done it on an earlier video. Um, I have put in the piece of Bob's history which is, look at that, fits beautifully. Once the carpet's over the top of that, you're never going to know, but there's a piece of checker plate in there, all right? Just uh, me and everyone who's watched this video know that. It's our little secret. Put the side repeaters in. They look very nice. For some reason, they come with about seven yards of uh, 
cable. I don't quite know where they're looking to plug them into, but I'll chop them off about here somewhere and feed them into the loom. Um, that's not really a problem. It just means that, oh, fuck's it, you pay for these things. I don't understand. I mean, obviously, it is a standard fitment onto 55 million different vehicles, and some of them, you know, are this far away from the indicator unit. Um, and my guard's gone on. Fuel filler's on. Very nice looking fuel filler. Sweet. I know it's not a suffix. I don't know if that wing moves. It's not, not fixed in position yet. I know it's not a suffix, but it's lockable. Um, and it's not the unobtainium that is the a suffix, like this one. That's what the a suffix. Well, up until, I guess, mid-1972, this was the style of the fuel filler cap. This one uh, has, has been destroyed. This is the one that was actually on Allen, I think, um, when I first got it. Um, but I think what happened was because the lock had broken, someone had just drilled holes through it, and screwed the two halves together. Managed to take another lump out of another part of my body today. Oh, it's all good fun, you know. Just We do this all day long. The bonnet has gone up to Steve. Uh, Steve the body's going to paint that. Steve the body is going to paint the bonnet. And then I was just looking at these, because uh, one of the, I mean, I'm going around doing little fanny jobs, because, I mean, there's just so many jobs, little jobs that need doing, which is why I thought, well, I'm going to start at the back, because I want to put the boot floor in, but it's easier to do the mud guards if the boot floor's out. So, I mean, you could do the boot, you could do the mud guards with the boot floor in, but it's just easier. So I just thought, if I'm going to make my life as easy as possible, the boot floor will go in tomorrow. Um... And then I was looking at these, and I thought, shit, why didn't I paint the inside edge of that? So it's going to have to come out and be painted, which is a bit twatty. Um, struggle to paint in this sort of heat. I'm going to have to go and get some slow activator uh, for the two-pack paint. Because um, I've kind of used the extra fast stuff. Uh, where are we? What's this one? This one is, an e yeah, an extra fast. Extra Kurtz, which I think is extra Kurtz. Kurtz is fast in German. There you go. Um, so I need to go and get a slow activator, I think, to do the black um, parts, the door frames and so forth. They can all go together. And then, right, so I was doing the bulkhead, the deck panel. Um, and I managed to get this deck panel here to fit a lot better, really, by kind of thumping it there quite hard um, and pushing it in there. And it sort of lines up better. It's still got an indentation. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Um, these things weren't perfect out of the factory. This is damn sight better than it would have left the factory. And I'm fucking hell, it's still hot. Right. <laughs> what I was doing for the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the spacers that need to go underneath here. You, know, you get a spacer that goes in here and here. Uh, there, there are no captive nuts on the tops of the wings. I, I did away with them because they were a pain in the bollocks. Um, and I pushed the bolts up from underneath. Uh, I put a nut on the top, then I can do them up from underneath. Piece of cake. So then I, I took a couple of um, whatever size nut that is. Three eighths, five eighths, I don't know, five eighths. I ground the edges off them. And when those go... Well, I don't have to paint them because unfortunately I've ground the zinc coating off so they will rust. So I'll paint them. Um, and then they can go in the spaces. That'll work, won't it? Um, yes. I'm still waiting for my mate to come back about the gearbox mounting. I'll have to give him a prod, I think, and say, Oi, come on, chap. I fucking need it. I need it quick. That door's going to get built up a damn sight quicker than the driver's door. I'm going to order the quarter light from Famous Form. I just can't find one that's in a usable state. And then this is my box of treasure. That's a top mounting, sorry, top seal, oh, oh, for the sidey slideys. And here I've got a box full of all the handles. Now, some of these handles came from Bob, and some didn't. They look fucking awful, uh, and that's because Land Rover went through this phase of plastic coating shit. Yeah, plastic coating shit. It just flakes off. So I'm going to clean all these back. That's an original one there. That would have been powder coated originally. It's probably a bob one. So you get two different types of handles. You get these ones, which just fix to the door. 
um, and you use those to yank the door closed. Then you get this type here, which goes onto these things. In fact, that one's broken, but I've got another one there. Go onto those things, and that's what you pull to open the door. This is just my box of door bits and treasure and no you can't have anything out of this box this box is treasure nothing in there is for sale no, I started bleeding a bastard thing oh do you know what that's not a bad idea really is it I mean for crying out loud it is ten past seven yeah, you can sit here Tonight we're opening our beers with a 7 16 spot. If only I had a bottle opener. <laughs> they were faulty. I, I, I couldn't sell them anymore. Oh my goodness. Oh, I don't do lager. Well, I do do lager, but I just don't. I prefer. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, oh yes. Right.